You've seen this figure before. You know about these changes throughout the 28 days in humans of the ovarian cycle. We're going to go through each one of these phases, follicular, ovulation, and luteal phase, and look at the HPG axis function at each of those, these phases. We start with early follicular. So this is the phase um, before ovulation, when estrogens are increasing before the LH surge. So we're gonna draw out our hypothalamic pituitary um, gonadal axis. And you should be able to do this in your sleep. We're gonna target the ovary. Specifically at this time point, it's the follicles that are developing. The follicles are present, opposed to there's no corpus luteum at this point. This is gonna result in estrogen and estrogen low to moderate levels. Low to moderate, because look, that's what it is, low and increasing, right? It's increasing over this time period as the follicles develop and those follicles are producing estrogen. So it's more and more estrogen as they grow more and more. This estrogen is gonna feed back to inhibit this system, keep it within normal ranges. Yes, estrogen is increasing over time. Um, and yes, there's those surges of pulses of GnRH coming from the hypothalamus, but this estrogen is designed to still keep the system within normal, um, some kind of baseline limits. And it's gonna do that at least for a little bit. Now, just before ovulation, things are gonna change. We still have our same HPG axis here, add in ovary again, ovaries. It's still the follicles, mature follicle at this point. Um, and now this follicle is producing super, super, super high estrogen. That's right here, right? You can see that, or just before ovulation. That super, super, super high estrogen is going to result in a switch from negative feedback to positive feedback. We don't completely understand the, me oops, that's the mechanism for this. It probably has something to do with the receptors, glucocorticoid receptors that are located on these organs. When estrogen reaches this critical threshold, they no longer they're gonna respond differently now. They're gonna actually be stimulated by estrogen instead of turned off. It was a receptor level um, thing, probably response to estrogen when it reaches this really critical level. When you have positive, positive, positive coming in here, why is this actually positive feedback? Well, the whole thing's turning itself on. That's gonna result in this surge of luteinizing hormone. Follicle stimulating hormone as well. You can see that, that's what happens right here. These surges are due to the positive feedback that estrogen, high levels of estrogen induces. The LH surge is important because that's what's going to cause ovulation. That's the one that's going to initiate that, that luteinizing hormone. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so positive feedback needs to be turned off by some change in something. What's the change here? What's the event? The event is ovulation. So ovulation occurs. We then need to go back to negative feedback. Luteal phase here. How do we turn this system off? Well, now we've got, which colors here? We still have the ovary, but in the ovary, wrong color, what is there? What's in the ovary? Can I get this to turn back? There we go. In the ovary, nice big ovary there. It's the corpus luteum, right? Corpus luteum, can't decide how to say that. Corpus luteum. The corpus luteum does not produce estrogen. It produces progesterone. Actually, I'm sorry, I'm just going to write it really big. P and inhibin. Inhibin. Those two things produced by the corpus luteum are going to feed back and turn off the system. Why didn't they before this? They weren't produced in high levels. Look, here they are produced by the corpus luteum. Before that, there's some there, but there's not enough to override the um, estrogen effects here. So this um, positive feedback occurs 
because of estrogen right here. So these two hormones cause negative feedback to kick back in and that LH surge is no longer. We've turned off the system. That's good because we don't want anything else to happen at this point. The egg's released. Um, the egg might be fertilized. If it is, we the actually the zygote will keep producing producing progesterone. The zygote will keep producing progesterone in order to keep this system turned off and prevent follicular genesis again. Right. So if you have progesterone constantly high you will not have follicular development begin again. The cycle won't start over again. Um, and the follicle won't develop. You won't ever bleed, the menses won't happen. If the egg is not fertilized, the corpus luteum um, degenerates and progesterone is then gone and a new follicle starts to develop. Follicle stimulating hormone is going to stimulate a new follicle. Estrogen is produced by that follicle. Negative feedback keeps it in check until estrogen levels reach a critical level, and then boom, positive feedback, cycle over again. Pretty cool, huh? Super cool. It's a beautiful, elegant example of biology being awesome. Okay, let's do a learning check. So what are my questions here? Here we go.